We begin today with the South Florida congressman who soon won't be the sole Republican in the South Florida delegation anymore. Congressman Mario diaz Ballard's new Miami-Dade colleagues in Congress are part of Florida's red wave. Although President Trump won Florida easily by 371,000 votes, this weekend the door is closing on his legal challenges to President-elect Joe Biden. Congressman diaz Ballard has been one of the president's staunchest supporters from the very beginning. He's been in Congress since 2002, was reelected in November without opposition. He joins us now this morning via Skype. Congressman, great to see Good you. Morning. Good morning. Good to see both of you. Thank you. Congressman, let's begin with the most basic question. Do you acknowledge that Joe Biden is the president-elect of the United States? Look, the process is ongoing, but obviously it gets more difficult uh, as states start certifying, um, you know, who won. Uh, I think that the Georgia certification uh, makes it more difficult for President Trump uh, to have a path forward. And so, you know, just like in the year 2000, it took 37 days. I don't think it will, or, or close to 37 days. I don't think it's going to take that long to finally have a president that's certified. Uh, and so, you know, look, I'm content to wait till the legal process uh, finishes. I'm patient. Uh, and the process is working as it's supposed to. We are all congressmen fully behind the process going fully forward as legally allowed. But really, when you count, the math just really isn't there at this point. Even if Michigan, even if Georgia, even if Pennsylvania, which all of those three states look like they will not be turned, the, the math electorally just isn't there at the moment. So. As, as someone who has the president's ear, as someone who has been his supporter since the very beginning, are, are you at all thinking that you might want to add your voice to a smooth transition, even starting now while the process plays out? I think it's important and it would be positive to have, uh, you know, the, the Biden folks uh, participate in a transition. If, if, if then, um, you know, something changes, then great, no harm, no foul, right? Um, that would be my recommendation. And again, I'm, I'm uh, I'm willing to wait for the process to, to be over. Uh, I agree with you that that uh, avenue for President Trump uh, to win is getting narrower and narrower as, as the hours go by. Um, but again, I also remind everybody that we should not go uh, and listen to uh, projections. We should wait for the final calls because if we relied on projections and then uh, Republicans would have lost 20 plus seats uh, in, in Congress and we picked up obviously a number of seats. So. Let's just be patient. The, the, the process will work, is working. Um, and so I'm confident that once again, if, if it is Biden, and I think it's more likely than not that it will be uh, Biden who wins. And then we'll have a, uh, a peaceful transition and, and otherwise uh, the same thing. So I'm not I'm not concerned about that uh, in, in, at all. Yeah. Congressman, as you well know, there is a long and glorious tradition in this country where a president who loses an election uh, uh, facilitates a easy transition to his successor. Gerald Bush did that. Uh, Gerald Ford did that rather with Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter did it with Ronald Reagan. Uh, it's happened in every presidency in our time. So why do you think President Trump is not going to facilitate an easy transition for Joe Biden? Yeah, look, I, would, I agree with you. You just mentioned some really good examples, but I would also uh, show the last example. Uh, for four years, there was an effort by the Democratic leadership, by the Democratic Party, by some in the press even, to delegitimize the presidency of uh, President Trump. Uh, we spent years following lies and fake innuendos uh, of this so-called, uh, you know, discredited uh, Russia collu collusion. So again, yes, it's true. You mentioned some great examples, but I would tell you that the example that was set by the Democratic leadership and by some in the elite, uh, including in the elite media, uh, trying to delegitimize uh, President Trump, you know, you saw members of Congress, Democrats saying, that's not my president. So, yeah, there have been some good examples. I think the last example that the Democrats gave uh, was, frankly, really, really hurtful. Uh, but I'm sure and I'm confident that uh, if, as I believe will probably happen, uh, if Biden is the overall winner, and then you're going to you're going to see a peaceful transition. And I, I, here's what I would also guarantee. I don't think you're going to see the efforts to delegitimize the next president to destroy the next president coming from the elite, coming from the uh, party, uh, uh, you know, the other side of the aisle and coming from the media uh, against the next president, as you've seen for the last four years, going against President Trump, which has no precedent, which has all been proven to be lies. 
Uh, and it's and it's been consistent, guys. Remember the Congressman. The Congressman, every I'm going to have to interrupt you. Except, Congressman, except not, women who, who not accuse, all the not excuse me, not all of the things that have been said. Certainly, there have been ugly things said by Democratic leaders and by people in the media against Trump, uh, President Trump. But they haven't been all lies. And frankly, a lot of the problems he had, part of the reason he lost, were mistakes of his own doing. Michael, I mean, look at his handling about, of COVID. Michael, I'm talking about the, the fake, uh, proven to be fake Russian collusion that was every day the first thing that you saw in every newscast, in every publication, that was proven to be an actual, you know, not only a lie, but a creation of the uh, of the campaign. It started with the campaign of, of uh, Mr. Trump's opponent. And yet for four years, that was factual. For, for years, we also heard that every woman should be believed. And we saw that during the Kavanaugh hearings. And yet... Uh, that disappeared when you had a woman, a credible woman, uh, accuse Mr. Biden of something very, very serious, of actual rape. And so that double standard, uh, which started, by the way, and so started with the Democratic leadership and ended with being repeated by most of the national and even some local media, uh, really was not uh, helpful. So I guarantee you that you will not have such a negative attitude as we've seen in the last four years. In the next four years, I hope that we don't have such a negative attitude in the next four years as we saw in a planned out, um, really frankly, organized fashion to try to delegitimize the president for the last four years. Congressman, so you, yeah. you have our word here, we will not be negative nor positive, but straight down the middle as always. But can we move forward a little bit here? Uh, talk about COVID because right now you were the first person in Congress to have COVID and have mm -hmm. now recovered. And I know that was a difficult time for you. Uh, Senator Rick Scott now has COVID among other people that we keep hearing about. You know, it, your perspective is so valuable now because of what you've been through. Lessons learned, should, should there be a state or national mask mandate as some states are now doing yeah. with some positive results? Yeah, I think a national mandate was, would, would frankly be kind of absurd because there are huge differences in different areas of, of the country and different areas of states. Um, you know, I wear my mask, uh, a mask as much as I can. I think it makes sense to do so. It, it's 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 an ounce ounce of prevention, right? So anything that we can do helps. Um, but I think a national, uh, just a feel good uh, mask mandate when there are huge differences in different areas uh, makes no sense. I am, however, very very excited about. Um, you know, we've seen the largest scientific mobilization since the Apollo program, a tribute to uh, the last, uh, uh, you know, to, to the President Trump's administration. You're going to have multiple vaccines in by, the, by far the quickest that we that humanity has ever seen, uh, a tribute to this great country, to the efforts of the federal government. That's a game changer. In the meantime, uh, we all have to do everything that we can to keep ourselves, our family members safe. Uh, that to me means social distancing. Look, common sense, wearing a mask when it makes sense, obviously. Um, but but having a mandate coming from Washington that you know some rural area in Alaska has to be treated the same as some dense place in New York to me is frankly a little ludicrous. You know, that's a that's a very fair point. How about this question? Can you, with what you've been through, what would be your personal recommendation to people as they decide how to be responsible for themselves and others? What, what do you suggest? To take it very seriously. Uh, take it very, very seriously. Look, there are some people that go through it and frankly have little or no symptoms. But there, as we know, there are hundreds of thousands of people who have lost their lives. And so I take it very seriously because I don't want to get my family infected. And so I, theoretically, I'm still immune uh, potentially now. Um, but why take the risk? Why take the risk? Take it very, very seriously. Uh, it's the best thing that we could do for our family members, for our friends, is to take it seriously. And so, again, an ounce of prevention, just being common sense, uh, try to be conscious of not spreading it because, you know, we may later learn that, you know, masks are not as effective or social distancing should have been, you know, five feet and not six feet or eight feet. Regardless, common sense, taking it very seriously, trying to protect your fellow, your, your friends, your family uh, is the right way to go. Yeah. Uh, Congressman, uh, President Trump ran a really excellent campaign in Florida, paid off, won by 371,000 votes. Part of the reason that he won is that every time he came over the last four years to South Florida, he spoke to uh, Cuban Americans, Venezuelan exiles, Nicaraguans, people from all over the Caribbean, Central, South America, 
and said socialism, we will never be socialist country, the United States. Uh, and that resonated. And, uh, and yet, you, I think, would you acknowledge that none of the opponents, Joe Biden is not a socialist. Donna Shalala is not a socialist. Debbie Mukar Sal Powell wasn't a socialist. Maybe they did a bad job of refuting that accusation, but I mean, you know, they lost in many ways because the president and others called them socialists. You know, I, I kind of, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, two, two articles today in the Miami Herald, which were, were almost offensive, kind of patronizing, saying that the Hispanics and Latinos in, in this area are kind of like stupid. Look, here's the reality. Um, the good policy is the best politics, Michael, well, you know that. So the contrast between President Trump's policies towards Latin America, towards the, these dictatorships, versus the contrast of Joe Biden's record. Remember, Joe Biden himself said that he's going to be the most progressive president in the history of the United States. Uh, what does that mean? That word means something. Who else, Michael, calls themselves progressive? Bernie Sanders, Maduro, Castro, Ortega. I mean, those are those are the facts. And then when you contrast not only those kind of things, but also the policy of legitimizing the Castro regime that Biden was a part of, uh, instructing the U.S. intelligence services to coordinate and share information with the Cuban intelligence services. That is the record well, that of Joe Biden. So let's well, just well, that's, be very clear. Yeah, it's the I, record and I, the I, contrast, not just the words that matter. Yeah, Congressman, I would concede there were many things in history that uh, Mr. Biden could have done better to deal with, and he did not. And as a result, at least in Florida, he lost. Correct. We, we, Correct. we really appreciate the time spent with us. Thank you. Hope your, your wife, I know Tia, has underlying medical condition. I hope that she and your son are well, and you as well. Thank you. Likewise, you all stay safe, and uh, God bless everyone. And with a very spiffy new Skype background also. <laughs>